Last week, we went through how to automatically create Stripe payment links and add them to your invoices. In this video, I'm going to dive into the second step, which is what do we do when a payment is made with that payment link? I will show you how to automatically update the invoice record within SmartSuite and apply a payment to the invoice within your accounting software. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our, our website, interdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. As mentioned, this is building on last week's video. We already have the smart suite solution set up. We're going to need access to your Stripe account, and we're going to need the make.com account open as well. And then any other software that you use for the accounting, whether it's QuickBooks or Xero, this video specifically is going to dive into QuickBooks. What we're going to do is we're going to use this record that we already have created. I have previously generated a payment link and created the invoice for the customer. When the customer goes in to the invoice and they select the link that we have added to pay via the payment link, and that will look something like this. When they pay this, what we want to do is receive that payment automatically, apply the payment to our invoice within our accounting software, and also mark the invoice as paid within SmartSuite. What that is going to look like is first thing, we'll go to our make account. Again, similar to last week, I will upload a blueprint where you have something to follow. Your exact workflow is probably going to differ slightly, but anyway, this will get us started. Here's the different modules we'll need. A webhook, pretty straightforward. That is going to be our first step. You'll go in, you'll search webhooks and use custom webhook, and then you'll click add. And when you do that, you'll have to name it. You can name it whatever you want. I would recommend naming it something that is relevant to what you're trying to do. For example, I have used the receive payment from Stripe as my web name. The next thing that I will do is just copy this address to the clip. What we're going to do here is navigate into our Stripe account. I'm in test mode. I would recommend building this in test mode to make sure that everything works properly and then moving it into your live mode for receiving actual payments. Either way, whether you're in test mode or live mode, we'll go over to this developers tab. We'll select webhooks here and we're going to add an endpoint. We'll leave this add an endpoint as is. And from her make webhook right here, we'll copy that and paste that webhook directly to the endpoint URL. You can add a description here for yourself if needed. And we'll leave this as events on your account. And I will just flip to the latest API version. And then the select events to listen to, what we want to do is type in checkout or check, and we'll use this checkout.session.completed. And then we can add an event and add the endpoint. Now we have that webhook set up. When a checkout or a payment has been made, a call is going to be made to that webhook with the associated data. But we'll go back into our make scenario here. First thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a call. This webhook here is going to answer it. It's going to collect the data. And then from that data, we're going to have to look up the payment link back in SmartSuite. Last week, we created a few fields here. We actually added the payment link. That's the one that I just clicked to show you this view. And then there's a payment link ID. And this is what we are going to be looking up this record here. But in make, I have a get a record module and you have to connect it to your account. I'm looking at my invoicing solution, my invoice table, and then my search by field is Stripe payment link ID, which matches here. And the search value is going to be this data object payment link. And you can get that by clicking into it. You'll have to do a test run on the webhook to pull in this data, but then you can click this data drop down. You can click the object and then scroll down to where it says 
payment underscore link right here, click it and drop it in, and then you're good to go. So that's part two of the module. What will happen? Webhook will be called. We'll grab that payment link. We will get that record within Smart Suite that correlates to that payment link so that we have all of the data that lives here in this record. The next step we are going to use, and I'm using QuickBooks, we're going to get an invoice by the ID. And when we created the invoice initially within QuickBooks via a make scenario, we passed in that invoice ID to SmartSuite. What exists there already, you'll use the get an invoice module. You have to connect your QuickBooks account and you're going to pass in the QuickBooks invoice ID. What that looks like over here is the QuickBooks invoice ID right there. That's going to get the actual invoice from QuickBooks. And then we're going to want to update that invoice. The first thing that we're going to add is the amount for the processing fee. Essentially, we're just going to add one line item and then create a payment. I'll click into it here. We're updating an invoice. We're going to add the invoice ID from the previous module. We can leave customer blank because that data already exists. We're going to add one line item. This specific workflow is looking at things as our original invoice only had one line item as it was. If you are someone that's going to have multiple line items, you're going to have to set this up a little bit differently using the map function and an array aggregator. But basically what this is doing is we're re-adding that one line item that exists on our original invoice. We're just going to map the amount and the description and unit price from that get an invoice module. And then we're going to add a second line item. And this one's going to be new data because, and this is where the, some of the logic comes in, because the payment was made with that payment link, we want to reflect the processing fee. If that's something that you charge your customers as a processing fee, we want to link that processing fee and add it to the invoice. How that's going to work is from the get a record within smart suite we're going to pass in processing fee which we had created here previously and i just used three percent of the total amount so we're going to pass in the amount which is the four dollars and fifty cents here and i've just named the description processing fee and then the unit price as well i just added it with a processing fee and then Sometimes it seems like you need to add an item here. I just selected one from the list that already existed. You probably create your own name and processing fee or something along those lines. Once you have that set up, we can update that invoice. And then we're going to apply a payment that we just received from Stripe to that invoice. You'll use the create a payment module from QuickBooks. And you'll go into here and map the amount total that we receive from Stripe. So this is a Stripe value that gets passed in and that exists in cents. We need to divide by 100 to get the correct amount. We're going to pass in also the customer value, which exists from these invoices here. And then we want to just add one total amount. Again, the total divide by 100. We'll map in the invoice ID and the transaction type will be invoice and then we can add a note as well internally just paid via stripe basically what all this is doing is applying a total amount to the customer and assigning that amount to the specific invoice that we are dealing with this is what the setup looks like here and you can click ok and move on to the last quickbooks module if you want you can have this invoice then sent out automatically back to the customer, or if you want, you can go in and do that manually. I'll show you what it looks like by having it set out automatically. And we're just going to map that invoice ID from the original get an invoice, and we will send it to whoever the customer is. So you could get that from a couple different locations from the smart suite record module. You can pick the billing contact or billing email from there. Or if one already exists in QuickBooks from the get an invoice, we could pass in the customer 
or billing contact email there as well. I've just added my email direct address directly. It's just a static value so that I can open up the invoice and show you what it looks like here in a moment. And then this is optional as well because I am relating the payment link directly to an invoice. I will then deactivate that payment link once it has been paid. What that looks like is just using the slash v1 payment links, mapping the payment link ID to that post request. And then in the query string, we're adding an item called active and we're making that false. So that's just meaning that this payment link is actually no longer active, but we'll deactivate it for us. And then we're just going to update our smart suite record as well. Once the rest of the process has been looked after and we're just changing the status to paid. What I will do here is I will show you how this actually functions when a payment is made. I'll turn on run once here. I'll go in. This is the link that is associated to the invoice. The customer will receive an invoice. It will have a link on it. If they want to pay by credit card, click the link. This is the page that opens. I will apply a payment to it, and then I'll show you what the rest of the scenario looks like and how it will actually work. Now I'm applying the payment. The payment has been completed. A few things have happened here. One being that the invoice has been updated. A payment has been applied. The invoice has been sent. The payment link has been deactivated and our smart suite record has been updated. I'll work backwards here. I'll look at the smart suite record and we can see here now that it has actually been marked as paid. The invoice or the payment link has actually been deactivated now. If I flip into my Stripe account, go payment links, and I can see that every payment link that I had previously active is now deactivated. And this is the one specifically here that has been deactivated. An invoice has been sent and you'll be able to see the rest of this within that invoice directly. So you can see an email was sent saying that payment has been made. There is now $0 due. And if I open up the invoice, it's marked as paid. We can see that there has been a processing fee added and the full payment value has been applied as well. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please hit that subscribe button so you get more tutorials in the future.